Now, the Sanyang police station was set ablaze together with a Chinese fist factory by youths of the community following the killing of one Jibril Sise by a foreign national said to be working at the Sanyang fist mill factory. The incident sparked chaos between the villagers and police on Monday. Our reporter, Binti Jalo, was at the scene and she filed in this report. The incident occurred as a result of this content of the youth of the Combo South village over the killing of a native. The Chinese fish factory has been a subject of anger among villagers alleged its activities as pollutants on the environment. The 30-year-old victim, Jibril Sise, is a native of Sanyang who named his first child one month ago. Police has since arrested the alleged murderer who was risked to become a police station. Protesters came out in large numbers to show their dismay with the police for allegedly protecting a killer. Sise's death sparked outrage in Sanyang that saw youth burning down the police station as well as fist mill factory where the alleged killer had been working. We managed to gauge the views of protesters and this is what some of them had to say. And our sadness mm -hmm. and what these people, the Senegalese, the foreign people mm -hmm. have did mm -hmm. to a youth man mm -hmm. in our village, mm -hmm. we can give that report to them. You can understand it. Mm -hmm. That's very wrong mm -hmm. and this is not right. It's not wrong. It's not right. Mm -hmm. There is something that is happening. Mm -hmm. A youth man mm -hmm. born in this village mm -hmm. and he was murdered by a Senegalese Senegal. and that's really, really very wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and what we are also doing, we have to be very careful on that. So we take a peace maintain and we wait for these higher rank people when they come. We sit with them okay. and, and discuss with them. Thank you. I get a now and a Senegalese went to his house to steal and stab him to death. Now, we as youths of this fleet see this as a revolution to stop this from happening again, with or without the government stepping in. A Senegalese went to his house to steal and stab him to death. Now, we as youths of this fleet see this as a revolution to stop this from happening again, with or without the government stepping in. We also engaged the police to know how the situation was being handled. ASP Lamin Jai, the police public relations officer, said the police responded swiftly following reports of the incident in Sanyang. Very well. I want to tell people, especially the people of Sanyang, to exercise restraint and calm and also be patient enough to allow the law to take its course. Um, now, you understand that when crime occur, it is the duty of the Gambia police force to ensure that perpetrators of crime are apprehended and um, the due process of the law is followed to ensure that um, the justice that the victims deserve is delivered. Far we were able to um, reinforce the police station there, uh, we did some evacuation first, and then we are able to reinforce the police uh, at the Sanyang village so that they were able to contain and control the situation from further escalating. And after that, we were able to maintain security presence there to ensure that um, no further um, demonstration or um, protests occurred. And so since yesterday, our officers have been there. And up to now, we're still moving on with the after operation activities to ensure that we continue maintaining peace and stability in Sanyang so that normal business and um, um, people can go about with their normal business and calm is restored in Sanyang. The chaos from the killing of Jibril Sise caused injuries for dozens of protesters as police fired tear gas to repel the crisis. The army was deployed on Monday evening to provide a security backup for the police intervention unit. I Africa is currently verifying reports of substances of suspected cocaine and cannabis found at the crime scene within the fish mill factory. Reporting for I Africa News, Binti Yalo.
All right, and now joining me on the line to discuss more on this development is Nyang Jai, an economist and also a social activist. Well, Mr. Jai, uh, thank you very much for joining us. First, I ask you, what did you make of the incident that happened yesterday in, in Sanya? Thank you so much, and good afternoon to the viewers. You see, a country needs what you call an equitable social contract. An equitable social contract makes sure that each and every citizenry in the country has due protection under the law, has equal opportunities to economic access, access to equal opportunities in terms of, you know, opportunities economically and also social upward mobility. So what we see in Sanya is the same that we are seeing in Katong, Gunjur, and other coastal towns. The government need to step up and fix the anomaly that is there. What is the anomaly? The anomaly is you have a youthful population without jobs. You have a youthful population that are ill-equipped with skills and education. And to date, the government is not gauging the temperature of the country. And yesterday is a classic example that peace is just not the absence of war. Because we are not fighting each other doesn't mean that we are at peace with ourselves. And what we saw yesterday by the kids, you know, openly demonstrating their anger, their disgust, shows that the establishment need to listen, shows that the establishment need to engage, and it finally shows that the establishment need to find a way to deal with the problems of the youthful population who form a bulk of this society. All right, yes, Mr. Njai, you, you mentioned about government's responsibility here. Now, do you think what we witnessed, uh, witnessed yesterday could have been avoided if what is right was done by the authorities? What is right is to make sure development is inclusive. And the fish mill factories along our southern coast or South Gambia is a problem for the communities, whether it's in Gunjur, Katong, or Sanya. People have been talking for the longest, trying to find a solution. But it seems and it looks like government believes they are doing the right thing. Well, if you believe you're doing the right thing and your citizenry are telling you that what you are doing is not what we want, I think you need to go back to the drawing board. And the government must be humble enough to say that we don't know everything and we don't have answers to everything. And the best way to get answers is to get feedback from the very people we attempt to serve. All right. I, I wouldn't want to um, say who, is, who should be blamed, but who do you think is responsible, again, of what happened yesterday in, in Sanyang? You talked about what the um, young people or, or the um, people in Sanyang has been talking about the fish mill in their, in their village or town for quite a while now. You see, um, it's a collective failure of the system. You cannot point at one place. I would start with the daily departed Mr. Sise that was stopped in his own house. May his soul rest in peace. Security is the responsibility of the state. Public safety is the responsibility of the state. If there was adequate security in and around the vicinity, I don't think a thief would have come all the way to his house. So that in itself is a failure because it's a responsibility dawn on the state. It's a public good. The public good means the state should ensure the security of each and every citizen and whoever wakes up in this country, including lives and properties. So that's a failure in itself. But the bigger failure is the environmental disregard caused by these fish mill factories, and that lies squarely on the Ministry of Fisheries. But ultimately, there is one Gambian who is responsible for all of this, which is the chief executive. He has ministers, and if they're not doing the job that he expects them to do, he can fire them. When things are not going well, he can go back to the drawing board and redraw a plan that will not only be sustainable, but be successful in making sure Gambia is a better place. So it's a total failure of the system. And the system must be bold enough to say, we need to put the brakes 
and talk to the people, listen to them, and collectively we come together and solve the problem as a nation. All right. Um, just lastly, Mr. Njai, again, I would ask finally, what do you think, um, of course, we as a country or the authorities should learn from this or what we witnessed again in Sanya yesterday? You see, um, I feel sorry for this government because not that they have inherited a mess. We already know that they've inherited a mess, but they have a youthful population without opportunities. And then it, that in itself is a ticking time bomb. Therefore, if you happen to have a ticking time bomb, it's the responsibility of the state to see how sensitive they can come and at least give people a relief. Unemployment is high in Gambia. Drug abuse is high in the Gambia. Truancy, kids going to school and not being in school is high in the Gambia. I think if I were in the shoes of the government, particularly the president, my focus will not be out politicking, talking about roads and other things, but making sure that the biggest cluster of my population, the youth, happens to have good, viable, socio-economic right. opportunities. If not, he will end up being their problem. And he doesn't want that. And we, the Gambians, don't want that because we want prosperity. And the only way we can get prosperity is to have inclusive growth, including the youth of this population growing with the economy. All right. Uh, I'm afraid we're going to leave it at that. Nyan um, thank you very much for your time. And it was uh, good to have you on the line.